to niche or not to niche for your agency? That is the question. And I've got your answer. Stay tuned. This is by far and away the biggest question I get asked within our Blueprint Training Slack channel. Should I pick a niche for my agency? Short answer, yes. I really like when agencies go after a niche, especially when they're first getting started. However, it's not for everyone. My agency, personally, we do not have a niche. We're more generalist. Now, I want to talk about this more in detail in a pros and cons chart because picking a niche while I endorse it for a lot of agencies in specific positions, I also might not suggest it. So you have to take this information and kind of bend it and mold it to your situation and really just ask yourself what it is that you want to get out of your business. So with that being said, let's jump into the pros and cons chart. So the first pro of niching down with your agency is if you pick a niche, you get traction much faster. For example, let's say you decide to only focus on CrossFit gyms or doctors or attorneys. When you're working with one type of niche, it's a lot easier to get traction both from a sales and operations point of view. Meaning, if you're only working with CrossFit gyms, it's much easier to get referrals from other CrossFit gyms. It's much easier to build case studies around CrossFit gyms. And if you're only working with a specific type of business, you can literally go up to other types of that business once you have those case studies done. And it's really easy to sell if you've got 20 examples of getting other CrossFit gym's results. On top of that, what it does is allows you to streamline your operations. If you're only doing SEO or Facebook ads for one type of company, one type of vertical, it makes your operations so much easier. You don't have to have all these different types of job types. It allows you to truly processize your service, which as you guys know, it's one of my favorite things to do is turning your service into a streamlined product because you're only working with the same type of companies over and over. So from a point of view or the context of SEO, there's so many things that you have to do. Keyword research, technical SEO, link building content. If you're only doing those things for one type of company, if you're only building links for CrossFit gyms, your link pool becomes a lot easier to deliver those types of links, that type of content, that type of technical work, all the same. You can really templatize your service, which will allow you to deliver more and more faster. Real quick, let me just interrupt this and just let you know that this is an excerpt from our sales training within the Blueprint. If you're looking for more information like this on how to grow and scale your agency, make sure you check out the Blueprint training. I've got a free training on outbound sales. All you got to do is hit the link below. It will take you to it. It's completely free and it's going to drive home a lot of this stuff in terms of growing your agency. So the con of this on the other side is that you're really limiting your cap in the market in terms of how much business you can get. If you're only working with CrossFit gyms, there's a cap on how big your company can get because there's a limit of CrossFit gyms in the market. There's a limit, uh, just a, a number of the limit of people that you can work with. So it just puts a squeeze on your revenue in terms of the cap of what your company can make. And also that's just on the sales point of view, but on the operations point of view, let's say you only work with CrossFit gyms and a SaaS company comes to you and they're like, yo, Ryan, we really love what you're doing. We want to pay you 10 grand a month, 15 grand a month, but you're not able to deliver that service because your process is so highly focused on working with these other types of clients that you're really not in market. Now, a pro to that though, is you can refer that work out to either build a relationship with another company or to just get a referral fee. That's what I do when a company that's really kind of outside the scope of what we do, if they want us to do Facebook ads or pay-per-click, I'll just send that to a strategic partner. They'll pay me a 20% referral fee recurring. We're still making the profit off of that lead, but we're just not servicing. So it's not tying up our operations, but we're still scraping as much money as we possibly can. Plus, I'm building a relationship with that other partner who's also sending leads back to us. So it is a symbiotic relationship that can work out. So a little way to t turn that negative into a positive. So another pro to picking a niche is messaging. You can hyper target your messaging to the type of companies that you want to attract. So again, if you're just a generalist doing SEO or Facebook ads or just generalist doing digital marketing, your messaging on your website and your marketing is very broad. It's very generic. It doesn't necessarily speak to that specific audience that you want to close, which means your conversion rates are going to be less. You're just going to get less leads. You might get more overall, but the quality of your leads is going to be lower because they're not as focused. They don't know exactly what they're getting into. When you are a niche specialist, when you only work with coffee shops, when you only work with software companies, you can focus and tailor your messaging to speak directly to that customer. Again, that means when they come to your website, when you're on the phone with them, you can speak specifically to their pain points because you know what they are inside and out, which just means, again, you might not get as many leads, but the quality of your leads is going to go through the roof and you're going to convert a lot more if your messaging is on point and resonates with exactly who that target customer is. So just the negative side of this coin, again, uh, we consider ourselves more generalist. We tend to focus more on B2B clients, uh, WordPress only websites, but that's, again, it's so general because so much of the market is either lead generation or uh, WordPress that that's not really a niche, right? That's more just going after an industry. We do only focus on WordPress websites because that allows us to shrink our need on the operational side for 
really expensive technical SEO folks or technical folks who need to work on a site like Magento that has all sorts of technical problems. By only working with WordPress, so much of that stuff just comes done for us out of the box. We can save on that position and focus more on content and link building where we see most of the gains for our specific clients. Now, again, the downside to that is just the quality of the leads that we get in. We get a lot of tire kickers. Again, people see us doing all these types of marketing. They come to the website. They're not exactly sure how they can work with us. So they just submit a form. They put us through the consultation process and they turn out not to be a good fit. So again, when you're broader, the con of that is you might get more leads. You might feel like your cap is higher, but realistically, the quality, the conversions that you get is far lower than if you're a niche specialist. So again, just flipping over to the con of that, if you are a niche specialist, it's so much easier to close prospects. So again, you might not get as many leads, that's a downside of being a niche specialist, but the quality of your leads and the conversion rate of your leads and the onus that that takes off your sales process, again, for you to go out, these are the little things, right? To go out and hire people that are less experienced because they're following much more of a templated script. When you're working with only a, a certain type of industry and you're getting results for them, it becomes so much easier to sell that service because again, if, if, if you're working on a prospect who's getting pitched by five or 10 different agencies, each one of those agencies has their own unique value proposition. If yours is, we only work with coffee shops. Here's a list of 10 other coffee shop owners. You can call on the phone right now and they'll tell you how amazing we are. If you work with us, we will get results because all we do is work with coffee shops as opposed to somebody like me who's pitching them as a generalist point of view. I've got to use all sorts of other different unique value propositions like the fact that like, hey, we're, we're really good in this. We've gotten results for all these different companies, but I'm telling you, especially if you're working in certain industries, like if you want to work with attorneys, attorneys want to talk to other attorneys that you've worked with. You're not going to sign it. Well, I don't want to say you're not, but it's going to be very hard to sign an attorney who doesn't have references of other attorneys and results that you've worked with. That's just how they are. Same thing with doctors and dentists. They want to speak to their colleagues that they trust. So basically you can leverage your client list as your sales team, which again, allows you to shrink down that need for a really big, massive uh, experienced sales team. And it will allow you to close a lot more contracts if you are focused on one specific niche. I already touched on this pro, but just the operation side of things when you're working with a niche is extremely streamlined. Meaning, again, if you're only working with one type of client, you're following a much more specific process as if you're working with an e-com website and a B2B website, because every time that client comes in, you have to sit down and you're like, okay, how are we gonna service this client? This project plan, we need to build it from scratch, which is gonna take more time. We need to get other types of people in here, which is gonna either take more capital from the operations side of you to get those people in, to train them, to hire them, uh, to get them brought up to speed, to figure out the problems with that website. Again, working on an e-commerce website has a whole different set of problems you need to solve than working with uh, an attorney website, right? So if you're only working with e-com, it becomes much easier because you have the experience, you know where the problems lie, you can get it done much faster. So again, operationally, and when we're talking about how much money you're going to make off these contracts, if someone's paying you 10 grand, but you have to put in five, t five hours a month of extra work, you're losing money on that because, and these are the little things that often go on track. Whereas if you have a streamlined process to only work with one type of client, it's going to be easier to sell. It's going to be easier to deliver and your profit margins are going to be higher because those in-between hours that we don't often track as agency folks, uh, they add up very quickly in terms of figuring stuff out, the cost of time of having to go and figure stuff out and do custom work. If you're not charging for that, then it's going to come back to burn you in the long run. The final con of working with a niche is the fact that uh, if you do choose a very specific type of niche like e-com or attorneys, something that has a much higher ticket value that a lot of people get pushed into, they're like, oh yeah, I'll work with a niche, I wanna work with attorneys. That requires a certain level of expertise from your staff, which means it's gonna cost you more, right? So again, we tend to focus more on B2B WordPress websites. Why? Because they're usually under 50 pages and WordPress does a lot of that technical stuff for you. Page titles, all that type of stuff, right? The canonical tags, you don't have to spend 20 to 40 hours doing a technical SEO audit to uncover stuff that some old legacy CMS had issues with. If it's on WordPress, we know that nine times out of 10, the boxes are all checked. We can spend just a couple hours reviewing it, sending them an audit that we're billing a lot for, but not taking a lot of time for, and then just moving on to the next stage of the campaign very quickly. Again, Whereas if you want to do something like e-commerce SEO uh, or attorney SEO, it's going to take a specific type of person internally to deliver that work, which means they have to be smarter, which means it's going to cost you more. It's going to take more time, which means you have to charge more too. So these things tend to even out over the long run. Again, you have to make sure that you understand the um, operational impacts of choosing a certain type of niche. Whereas if you just go after coffee shops, it's pretty easy. It's just a matter of local SEO. You can probably get a couple of people off Fiverr to help you out as long as you have a very specific process. But if you want to go after like Magento websites, demandware websites in the e-com space, you're going to need a much more sophisticated type of personnel in order to deliver that. So what's my final answer? My final answer is if you are first getting started, choose a niche, right? If you don't know which direction to go, do some research, find out which niches are gonna pay you the most, right, upfront in terms of how much can they afford to pay. 
that's a very simple mathematical situation to just figure out, hey, an attorney charges an average of uh, 10 grand per client, then you know they can afford to pay me X, Y, and Z. Very easy to find out which uh, industries and which niches are high paying. On the same token though, you wanna take into account the operational side of that. If I choose to go after a more expensive niche, does that mean I'm going to have to operationally scale up and staff up with a different type of person in order to deliver the service? So again, just because they're paying you more doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna make more. It might actually mean for more headaches because the more they're paying you the more expectations that they have which means they're going to expect things like communication they're going to expect you to be on top of things and be able to catch all these technical things if someone's paying you 10 grand a month for services they expect 10 grand a month of results right so it's really important that you understand not to just go after that shiny object in terms of attorneys or plastic surgeons uh, but because not only do they expect more but the competition's more and you might not get the results so you want to make sure you're finding a niche that uh, is low competition if that even exists anymore pays you right and allows you to staff up profitably. You need to take all these things into account when selecting a niche. If you've been in the space for a while, uh, you don't have to overhaul your entire brand either if you want to focus on niche. Like I said, when we fo when I tell people that we do B2B WordPress only websites, that's not on our uh, that's not on our website. I'm not necessarily publicizing that. I'm talking to them more about that once I have their attention and we're having a sales conversation. I'll tell them if they fit that niche that we only work with these types of companies. And then what I have is a set of case studies in a deck that speaks specifically to that. So as opposed to overhauling our whole front facing brand, once we kind of attract them in or we're doing some outbound stuff, outbound sales is also really lethal for that. Make sure you check out my training on outbound sales. It's amazing. But if you're doing outbound sales, it allows you to kind of pull those case studies in and then hyper target who you're talking to. So you can basically create a niche within your agency that the public doesn't see, but only those conversations that matter with those types of people are happy to see. So again, this doesn't mean you have to overhaul your whole brand, but what you should do is put together some case studies, put together some decks, some information that will allow you to kind of chunk off your outbound sales process to go after that specific type of niche and then talk to them, just tell them that this is what you do as opposed to again, kind of having to overhaul your entire facing brand. So point here is guys, um, you know, after going through a crazy year, really just with this virus and with my companies, you know, I've learned a lot. And one of those things is focus. You can only do so many things at a time. So as opposed to going very thin and horizontal, I'm a big fan of going very vertical and deep. What that means here in terms of this conversation that we're having about niches is that going vertical and deep means picking something and being the best at it. If you can become the best at a certain niche, you will make a lot of money with your agency. I can promise you that. So always, guys, if you like this video, please leave me some comments down below. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Leave me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.